my pleasure to be here with you, here with you today. Um, it's a very interesting topic about balancing people, process, technology for building a new work space. It's a different angle of digital transformation. Everyone talking about customer journey, talking about customer experience, but what about employee experience? This is a new angle of the digital transformation. But before we go deeply into the discussion, let's have a couple of minutes to introduce yourself, your experience in digital transformation. Paris, please. Sure. I'm Sri. I am from First Abidabi Bank. I head the data analytics uh, AI practice. And uh, I am a core data scientist and a statistician by uh, my qualification. And within my uh, portfolio, I manage the digitalization by embedding uh, automation, AI, and analytics. So. Thank you, Shahrukh. Hi. Hi. My name is Abdul Ghani Yamoud. I'm head of IT systems and uh, ERP in the company. Uh, we are managing everything related to IT infrastructure, cloud, ERP systems, uh, BI and data analytics, and e-commerce uh, department in the company. Thank you. Mr. Vishal. Hi. Good afternoon. Yep. My name is Vishal Anand, and I, I work as a senior director in the Jumeirah Group of the Dubai Holding Hospitality. I'm responsible and manage IT for the restaurants group, as well as asset management functions, and also take care of the portfolio management and the, uh, the ERP program and work-based productivity tools. Uh, I've been in this country for over 22 years uh, with the Jumeirah Group for the last three years, and prior to that, I was in about 21 years working in the Emirates Group. Thank, thank you, um, and thank you, uh, organizers, for having us today, uh, panelist members. Demir Jaksik, I'm the CIO for K International Consultants. K International Consultants um, is around a little bit over 2,000 strong in architectural, engineering, and construction consultancy. I'm Dubai-based, um, and I've been in this part of the world for the last seven years. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you for being here. And as you know, behind any successful digital transformation in any company, we have a lot of talk about customer journey, amazing customer experience. Everyone focus on this. But what about employees? What about the employee journey themselves? What about the work environment and digitalization of the employees themselves? So now there's a lot of focus and a lot of new scope now about employee experience within the organization. So, Mr. Platani, if we can start with first introduction about how to create a better workplace by eliminating any friction in the work environment. How technology can help your employees on this? Sure. So, uh, most of us nowadays are working, most of us are here in UAE environment especially. We are uh, suffering somehow from uh, volatility of our employees and the uh, uh, mostly in volatility of employees, high turnover. So uh, if we go dig deep here, we can notice mostly that during these exit meetings with the employees, we notice somehow they mention that they are not happy, they are not satisfied, uh, they feel not strategically aligned with the company objectives, uh, they feel not engaged, they resist any new capability we introduce to the company, so all these uh, we are suffering from, which is leading to less retention, which is also impacting our bottom line. So how to move from that situation to a situation where we have loyal employees, engaged employees, happy, satisfied, strategically aligned, feeling that uh, the company is their own company somehow. So this will reduce retention somehow and will impact positively our uh, bottom line. Uh, so I'm going to give an example that uh, they always use it in uh, management theory. You can think about the company like a carpet with a beautiful drawing. That beautiful drawing, if you look at it from top, this is the company objective or company strategy. However, that beautiful drawing that you see in the carpet, if you zoom in, there is little colors or little fibers that are making that drawing beautiful. These little fibers or these little colors 
if they don't look as beautiful as the big drawing, the big drawing will not make sense. These little fibers are our employees. We need to make sure that they are looking good for the big picture to look also good. So now we mentioned somehow the problem and where we want to, to reach, what is the ultimate objective. Now, how to reach that ultimate objective? We're going to take it, uh, like uh, Mr. Shadi mentioned, we're going to take it from the three P's per perspective. People, process, or platform. How, and I'm going to mention some touch points that we need to take care of so we can have less friction, less resistance in the organization. So, uh, first of all, we cannot talk about employees without discussing the HR department or human capital management in general and how technology can help in the human capital management to give a frictionless environment. Uh, human capital management, our employees are our main assets. So first of all, we have to check the HR department. Does it have the right roles to make the employees happy and satisfied? Does it have the right policies or procedures that will make sure that these employees are happy, loyal, satisfied, and they don't leave to a better workplace where they will take care better of them. So we always hear about the recruitment process, the onboarding process, training, day-to-day uh, -day admin tasks, uh, performance appraisals, everything. We hear them, they look very good in the uh, policies of procedure. However, are they effectively applying them? So we worked in some environments where there is a beautiful performance management uh, procedure. However, at the same time, uh, every three years they make performance appraisal to the, uh, to the employees. So by that time, the employees will feel demotivated and they will go to a better somewhere else where they will take care of them. Uh, performance evaluation, once they will join, they need to understand employees, what is the objectives will KPIs that they will be evaluated against. So if you are telling me at the end of the year, you are not performing well, but I'm feeling that I'm performing well, why you did not communicate to me better what is the objective that I need to achieve during that year? To achieve that also, from a technology perspective, nowadays there is very good cloud solutions that are implementing all these policies and procedures with very less friction. They have mobility, they have cloud. Uh, employee, since he will be recruited, he will receive a link on his email. Once he will go to the link, he will open it. He will find what is the missing documents. He will find what is the training to be done during that year. He will also check what is the checklist of policies and procedures that he need to understand so he can perform well his work, so he's aware since the first day he will join the company. He will not be lost what to do. He will see the org structure where he belongs. He will see his contact list. He will see the objectives that he needs to hide. So everything, plus he can do a self-service. He doesn't have to go to the shared folder and print the leave request and go around everywhere to get the approval. He will push it directly on his mobile application. His supervisor will approve it. And he can see also the calendar of his, uh, the staff with him uh, when they are hidden. So all of this, we can do it through technology. This is the HR part. Next part is to make our employees more satisfied, we retain them, is to reduce interrupt interruptions, we increase mobility. When I say reduce interruptions, so we have to, now some companies stop completely work from home. However, some employees are still used to that uh, environment. So making it more flexible, making all these cloud solutions where uh, it will enable the work everywhere. So nowadays people are using something called thin clients. Whenever you use, even if you bring your own laptop, you log into this thin client, you will have all the applications, or policies, or procedures in a secure manner because it's running all on the cloud and you do everything from home. Uh, mobility, sales team have to have everything on their hand. They have this catalog of the products, the brands, uh, statement of account of customers, collections, uh, everything they can do it without coming back to the office. This will empower them and make them feel very 
uh, no need to do the friction with, them, with the department. They don't have to call the warehouse and ask them how much inventory I have. They don't have to call the accountant and ask him what is the balance of this customer. So this is less friction, uh, for, not needed, that can be done through automation. Exactly. Uh, one more part that I want to discuss very quickly is the policies and procedures that are, or SOPs that are available in the company, if they are very well defined, this will help a lot to remove resistance, to remove friction. What I mean here, in summary, what I noticed in, the, in some workplaces, every time they want to do some process, they have to think how to do it and it will add subjectivity. If it is well-defined, well-trained, well, -trained, well uh, people are aware that, for example, procurement process, everything needs to be signed by management. This will take time, this will take friction, this will take subjectivity. However, if you have some threshold defined in the policy and procedure where anything less than uh, 1,000 can be approved by the line manager, more it has to go to the uh, committee, uh, is there a racy matrix or uh, responsibility, accountability, uh, co communicate to information uh, matrix where everybody knows when, who is responsible, to whom we should copy in the email, to whom shall we engage, communicate, uh, who, shall we, uh, who shall contribute in the process. This will help a lot. This will uh, remove resistance. One more point which is very important is defining SLAs and OLAs between the departments. This will remove a lot of friction. Yeah. Once we implemented SLAs, OLAs in our companies, much less complaints, much less escalations happen. Things were running smoothly. Uh, for example, uh, we have done all the list of uh, IT service catalog. Once we have done it, we have published it. Then next to each service, we have defined clearly that uh, creating, uh, for example, a promotion in the system will, uh, this, these are the prerequisites. Response time, uh, for initial response time is one man day, three man days for the time to closure. So we never had problems, we never had uh, exactly. escalation that uh, part. Last point is the change management. Here, change management is a procedure that is very important and that will help us reduce resistance uh, from the uh, company uh, staff. Why? Because it will help us engage the right people from the start. At every step, you have to call the right business owners, the right line managers, the right people from the initial business case till uh, solution discovery till uh, the acceptance or confirmation by the line managers till one very important point is training part. So if you train your employee on this new solution or this new capability, he will resist it less. If he's not trained, he will go back to his Excel and he will work uh, the, the manual way. And you have also to open a feedback channel. So if you move something to operations and you don't open a feedback channel, at some point of time, they will find something hard in the whatever you have provided and they will drop it. If you open a feedback channel, at some point of time, they will send you back what is, you do continuous improvement and you will have less resistance. Exactly. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, it is a really very good point that technology should be always an enabler for employees to do their day-to-day -day job. And as you mentioned now, the workplace is totally changed right now. It is remote working, working from home. Uh, all of this flexibility the company start to give in. So sharing about this, about the leader, for how you are building your digital team, how you are upscale or rescale your employees to adapt to this new work environment. See, I saw his passion in answering the first question. So there was a few points that I actually wanted to add to that. You know, let's step back for a minute and detach technology from employee problem and just answer this question of why does friction basically come? You know, technically friction is something when things wants, don't want to move along yes. and when people doesn't want to move along. 
And we need to remember that the modern technology of friction is what is used in many of the machines to create a successful braking mechanism, which actually saves life by converting the kinetic energy into thermal energy. Now, why is the friction within the employees towards the various thing cannot be channelized to make it productivity? Why does friction basically come in? This is, a, this is a challenge to your question that you asked me, how do you form team? You can't form a team until you kill and address that friction itself. Exactly. According to me, the friction arises by four basic points. One is when people have reluctance to change. It can be change of people managing them or the technology that they have to work on. The second one is fear. They fear multiple aspects. What would happen to me because there is a change in the management? What would happen to me because there is a change in the technology? Third and very, very important is open channel of communication and transparency that we as leaders need to embrace in our team. See, when I hire people and, I, and when people ask me, what are your expectations from me? I tell them only two things. One is discipline to stick to your plans and deliver what you're promising. The second one is transparency. Don't fake sick leaves and don't fake emergencies with me. You know, we all are humans. We all have problems, we all have situation. So when you got to have a personal engagement or you have a personal challenge, come talk to me. You don't have to give me the entire universe of information, but I should build the transparency trust with my team that tomorrow a gentleman goes on a date he simply tells me, Shri, I want to go on a date. Can you give me a couple of hours of break? So I, I actually want to build that kind of a level, though they don't have to get too personal. But you know, that open channel where people trust that we understand each other's needs. You know, when we detach technology, these are the basic things that we can do to eradicate friction at work and channelize that friction in much better way. Now, coming back to the question that you asked me of how do I build team? See, uh, I strongly believe in building teams which are a combination of three dimensions. Now, because I belong to financial industry, I, when I form a team, I don't believe in having entire team only experienced in finance. I don't do that. I have a three dimension. First dimension is my interns who are fresh out of the universities, yes. have learned so much, are very techy, understands everything, most of the time spend on social media. These kind of guys bring me a lot of uh, research information. What's happening in the market, what somebody launched today, because they're always like this with the information. Second set of people are people who doesn't belong to my industry, but are experienced. Like people from e-commerce, healthcare industry, or construction industry. This kind of people bring in ideas which I can transform and implement in within my team. Then is the third segment of people of finance industry with financial experience. Now this is when these three dimensions come together, you have a lot of, uh, you know, communication going on and ideas coming in. You know, the person, a, a person from a con construction industry can throw at you some random example because it just doesn't understand how finance probably we working. But that is an idea of automation that you might probably implement. Because today, it's only the industry that is changing, but one is a customer who is a common touch point amongst the industry. I, as a customer, I have a bank account, so I'm a banking customer. I do have a property, so I'm a real estate customer. So I do go to a hospital, so I am a healthcare customer. So the touch points are the common. So bringing these varied uh, experiences and people together will always help forming a better team. Thank you very much. Actually, it is really very important, as you mentioned, about the training part, the diversity of the team between third and third total expertise, and all of this with the big demand in the market now for high-skilled digital savvy employees, and you have different people in your industry as well, in your company. So, uh, Vishal, how you are targeting this training, using technology for training? How you ensure your team are adapting to the emerging technology? As you mentioned, change is, is very big now inside the organization. And you're asking a lot of people to use a lot of technology, emerging technology for working from home or mobility or whatever. So how you are ensure your skills are, technology is not a burden for your employees, but it is enabler for them. How you are using technology for training and 
enhance the MPLV satisfaction. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, really. So just to add, before I answer that question, I, I'd just like to support what she mentioned, right? So to uh, remove the friction, one other important factor is trust. And that trust is, you know, it, it's a, it's a two-way street, right? The trust between what I have for my team and the trust between what the team has on myself as a leader, right? And that's one of the biggest barriers for trust, right? And, uh, and that will remove this case of the friction. And then I think we should all should focus and on that aspect as well to uh, reduce the friction with the team. But coming back to your question about, uh, you know, the training part. So we are from the hospitality industry. And then, you know, hospitality industry, uh, the way we, uh, as an organization, I'm sure every organization goes like that, but for, especially in hospitality, employees, it's an employee-centric thing, right? Employee is, is the center of everything what we do because uh, for the frontline staff, whatever they do directly impacts our revenue, directly impacts our customer experience, the, you know, the employees, uh, the, the people who are visiting our restaurants, people who are visiting our hotels fees. And so we are an employee-centric organization, and that has been in our design of our organization structure as well. So any, any program which we do, uh, our, the design thinking process starts with keeping the employee at that, and then we have the various customer touch points. So, and, and, and you know, with the recent pandemic experience, and actually the two things that has very good happened, uh, very good thing happened, uh, the, the positive side of the pandemic is, first of all, uh, you know, luckily I was an organization, we have implemented uh, the office tools, uh, uh, which was there for uh, collaboration purposes. And, uh, and uh, the adoption rate was not great, and I'm sure, I, I'm sure others also did, but once the pandemic, when we had to shut down, the, uh, the, the only other alternative was for through the, through the collaboration through this Office 365 tools, be it Teams, be it anything else. That was, as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, 20x times the adoption rate increased, right? So that is a fantastic uh, story. But at the same time, uh, we, as an organization, we are very uh, particular with regards to the training programs. And when I say training programs, it's not just from a customer experience enhancing training programs, but most importantly, because we are regulatory driven uh, based on compliance for health and safety, we need to make sure that our staff are trained. And the crucial part of this training is our frontline workers, right? So 70% uh, of our workforce is frontline workers, and not of the, all of these people are actually connected to the laptops or, you know, or, or to the desktops. So these are the people who are on the ground helping the customers, et cetera. And then we need to find what is the right way of the technology. And then we found a fantastic platform uh, which is, uses an AI-based platform, uh, which uses AI-based technology to actually reinforce the training programs. Now, what I mean by that is we don't do a traditional training programs for one, uh, it's a three-hour course or you know, one-hour course, uh, because that, we believe, uh, will not keep them engaged. So what we have done is we have implemented a short uh, three to five minutes video bus, right? That's, the, that's what the employee needs. And uh, we basically, we have broken down the whole training program into small beats or bites of chunks of information, which is what we need to convey to them, right? And we use this tool as a platform to make them understand those things because then they, they are hooked on. And then we use gamification technologies to actually consume them. So how do we test it? We make it interesting to them by playing games. They respond to the questions. And by playing, uh, having these, uh, you know, this type of reinforcement based and very personalized training, we have ensured that most of them are feeling engaged, right? And, and uh, interestingly, uh, the corporate staff who are actually having to access to the PCs, their engagement rate is only 70%, whereas our frontline staff, the engagement rate is 95%. Oh. So this kind of technology plays a significant role to eliminate that barrier. And this is just little that common sense thinking. Do I keep a long one hour training program and keep them bored? Or do I keep them a bite sized information which will keep them engaged? And I think we chose the second option. and and. Luckily, the technology helps a lot. So I just wanted to add one point onto the training. I think one thing that in my team and my org worked when we were trying to do trainings is our own employees training our own people. Yeah. You know, you because they feel connected, they feel open to ask more questions. And then, you know, we did this A and B uh, groups of uh, trainings. 
So external people came in to uh, train about technologies, and we had people who got trained training the employees. The amount of the questions, the amount of engagement, and the amount of interest people shown by learning from their peers was drastically more than learning it from you know people who are coming in to see. So I think that is one thing because then people, uh, as peers, start connecting to the technology, and the training effectiveness will be achieved. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. I like the idea of a five minutes video training. It yeah. is a new and uh, I think with this time, it is very, very interesting. So see, this is a generation of Insta <laughs> stories, WhatsApp yes. stories and everything, stories, yeah. where uh, people don't see anything. I think, according to my prediction, we, when we do a training video to our own people, when we launch mega programs, we do not do anything beyond two minutes, 20 seconds. Yeah. I think we really don't do <laughs> beyond that. Okay, we so all are used to this TikTok culture, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? So yeah, this is we, any, time, any, so. any video more than... Uh, because we have too much distractions. Exactly. That's correct. Taking our focus away. That's true. So if, I mean, if we go, go deep more in technology, let's go more stable in technology. I know now a lot of companies using virtual reality, 3D modeling, 3D modeling for the customer, for the clients. <laughs> how can you see this technology for the employees themselves? First, how the MBUs can adopt using virtual reality or 3D modeling and selling as a tool for them, or how we can you leverage this inside your company as well? Thanks, Mike. Uh, <coughs> being a premier uh, build environment uh, consultant, we use uh, virtual reality uh, uh, internally within the organization to deliver the beautiful communities that all of us live and operate within, uh, but also to share our designs uh, with our clients. Um, uh, we have been uh, using VR tools for a number of years now, um, and we have been using, I'm not going to name, uh, the product uh, uh, that you would kind of you know, have put onto your head and then explore, explore the models that we deliver uh, virtually. Now, um, the, in terms of the VR aspect, uh, yes, we have uh, the goggles, uh, but also if you traverse our offices uh, throughout the day, um, uh, at any point in time during working hours, you'll see lots of uh, 3D uh, representations on the 2D monitors, because this is what we do. Um, uh, we have we are fully BIM certified and compliant. Uh, BIM is the way how we deliver work. Um, I'm sure that all of you have heard um, uh, what BIM is, um, and VDC, Virtual Design Construction. Um, it's, um, first of all, this is something that helps us deliver high quality products to our client. Uh, secondly, uh, when we do these design reviews, uh, it is far easier uh, to uh, uh, get uh, to understand what's happening. Do we have you know, the uh, uh, MEP uh, or utilities? Uh, uh, do we have any clashes? Uh, do we have clashes with the, anything that architects may have cooked up? Uh, and so on and so forth. Um, the, while most of our staff are well versed uh, in you know, doing BIM for their day to day, uh, our clients may not be. So our clients are people like yourselves. Um, and it is far easier for us to uh, tr tr transcribe the information to our clients or, or share our designs with our clients if we immerse them into a virtual world. Um, uh, so to Say it as an example, you know, if we if we are to explore this ballroom, uh, you know, we can uh, uh, you know print out 2D designs of this ballroom. We can say, you know, it has uh, it's 30 meters by 60 meters, and this is how things will look like. Uh, however, if you uh, do explore it in uh, virtual reality, you'll be able to walk through it, um, and then. This is where ideas are born. Uh, our clients will say, uh, not that they will, but for, you know, for the simplicity's sake, they will say, I do not like the color of this table, and I would like to have it green. Uh, thank you, uh, dear client. Click, 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 
it is now green. So what do we think about this? Oh, it'd be fantastic if we can have maybe uh, pink butterflies uh, on this green table. Yep, maybe a few more clicks. Um, yes, we have pink butterflies on the table. Um, and, you know, at one point in time, and I'm really oversimplifying it, at one point in time, uh, our client will be impressed. So they will not only be impressed um, uh, with the work that we have done, and hopefully they will be paying us on time, uh, but they will also be imp uh, impressed in terms of the experience uh, uh, virtual reality or technology uh, has enabled. Um, uh, it does, it is a little bit difficult to, uh, uh, you know, have these client review meetings in VR with goggles continuously since we do not have the facilities, although, uh, you know, if we elect to have, they are, are they already available via rooms, via tents, um, and, you know, lots of other equipment um, uh, on the market. It's, uh, it clearly, uh, some of these processes, um, uh, how we deliver and how we share our deliverables have transformed in the last uh, number of years. Um, uh, as well as the VR has a potential to transform uh, the employee experience uh, or, you know, for someone like myself, uh, internal customer experience. Um, uh, VR is very, very important um, uh, and there's lots of publications in the industry that I'm coming from in terms of occupational health and safety training. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many of you uh, have employees or your workforce uh, uh, in adverse conditions, operating in adverse conditions. Uh, it is very easy to recreate these adverse conditions, such as construction site conditions, uh, in a VR world and run the training, occupational health and safety training, um, um, uh, uh, using the technologies. Uh, this clearly uh, kind of wraps it all together in terms of how every, you know, most of us are here technologists, uh, how we help build a better world, uh, how we help uh, deliver a better customer experience, be it a client or be it an internal customer, uh, uh, and less friction. Uh, mm. I would like to share that I have a problem, and I was, uh, as, I, as my panelist has been uh, uh, talking to it, I was thinking about it. The two events have, hap have happened. Uh, first event, um, and my apologies, my phone was uh, ringing. Uh, if you heard the phone ringing, that was my phone, and I'm so sorry. I was thinking of putting on a silent. And thank you, Yassim, uh, for silencing my phone. Nevertheless, I realized that I have a smartwatch, and I could have done it myself. But I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> so sometimes, having technology uh, uh, without us using it, it's uh, pointless. Uh, so I think the, the uh, adoption and, and, and the uh, know-how how to use technology makes uh, perfect sense. The problem that I have is when I've joined one of, one of the companies, it may not be the company I work for now, um, uh, on my first day, I was greeted by an IT specialist um, who came and uh, they were carrying a small piece of paper, uh, a cutout piece of paper, and they were handing me that piece of paper in secrecy. Um, and I said, oh, what is this? This is the password for the Wi-Fi network. <laughs> I, uh, that, that, this was a couple of years ago. Uh, and I said, oh, okay. Uh, and why am I supposed to do this? Well, when you connect, uh, you have to kind of type it in. And you know what? Next month, uh, I'm going to give you another piece of paper. Uh, okay, what would that piece of paper be? Oh, that'd be the new password. Mm. Uh, right. So do you hand out piece of pieces, these small snippets of paper to uh, every single uh, 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 employee of our, of our organization? Uh, no, 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 it's only for the uh, VIPs. So 
And clearly, uh, this was one of the first things that I have changed uh, in that organization. Um, uh, and you know, that was a uh, cause for lots of friction. The friction that I have created, and I realized that um, um, the last week, is uh, you know, we've been adopting technology to be more secure um, um, and to ensure that we protect our employees' identity. Um, as part of that, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the MFA or 2FAs, uh, self-service password recoveries, uh, the need to change your password at a certain cyclical uh, period, and so on and so forth. Uh, I have asked one of my uh, customer service leads uh, to share the steps of what a new starter in the organization that I run uh, has to do. So the new starter will need to log in. They'll be prompted to change their password, friction number one. The new starter will then be, I don't know the exact sequence to, to, to be told, but the new starter will be asked uh, to uh, get the MFA, get the app uh, on their phone, because they can't proceed without getting an app. So they need to go and find their phone, they need to get the app, and then they need to register for this MFA. Uh, I'm not going to say which technology we use, but most of you are using it <laughs> or have it available. Then when, once when all of this is done, they have to register for the self-service password recovery, uh, which will ask them for the, again, for the mobile phone, which will ask them for uh, the secret questions, uh, and maybe it will ask them for the blood uh, donation. Uh, so um, then I realized, and I think there are a few other steps as well, uh, then they need to log in and they'll see the internet homepage. Uh, so what, we ha what I have done is I created a friction. Um, and I would be keen uh, to hear from you uh, mm -hmm. or anyone here in the audience, mm -hmm. how can you help me uh, kind of have a better experience uh, for our customers uh, uh, in, in that regard? Sure, we can discuss that. <laughs> uh, That's very interesting. Here, yeah. I, I would like also to add on some, before we answer your Haida, uh, we can discuss after the session. Some real case scenarios for augmented reality that is being used currently in the retail industry, especially in the beauty industry. Uh, some of our brands are having uh, applications uh, for customers where they can take a picture of themselves or through video simply, turn on video selfie, and they can try all these uh, contact lenses or eyelashes or uh, makeup or what have you through augmented reality. At the same time, you can directly convert that uh, fun tool or game tool into a conversion which makes sales for the company. Uh, this is very helpful nowadays, especially in a, a culture of social media or TikTok or everything. So everybody is loving this and it, it's leading to uh, sales uh, figures. One more thing that helps a lot uh, in everything related to online uh, sales, you have a very high rate of returns. So people, they get it, they don't like it, they return it back. This is uh, something very uh, uh, happening a lot. So whenever you have this option of augmented reality, at least you try it, virtually try that product before you buy it, so it will lead to less returns. Uh, one more augmented reality that is happening in the retail industry, it's going to boom soon, most probably, is the metaverse now. Everybody is talking about it. So in this metaverse where you have your virtual environment, you have your avatar, and you are attending uh, virtual uh, meetings, or everything, most fashion brands are now opening shops in the metaverse. So. Once they open shops in the metaverse, you have to go and buy the same, for example, uh, jogging suit that you buy from uh, Dubai Mall. You can buy it in the metaverse and wear it in the metaverse, and you will not be uh, uh, having it in real life. Probably so, one size down. One size. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is also now booming to uh, help the customer experience and the with yeah, the augmented I, reality and new technology. Exactly. At I, one point, I just wanted to add a token question. 
So one point I just wanted to add to your question of how do you make it frictionless <coughs> when you uh, launch something new? It can be a customer onboarding or in your uh, a new process for your employee. I think simplification is new happening, which means if it is an existing customer already, they do not expect you to ask the information that you already have about them, unless and until it is something new that you want to know. So the minimum amount of information you ask for a customer who's already with you is something that won't create a friction, probably less amount of friction, even in case it would create. But for a, a new uh, onboarding or a new customer, new employee, those essential information that they could also relate to, like asking for them passport, Emirates ID, things like that, these are non-questionable because they know that these are, so that journey design is where you need to keep in mind the aspects of which step can create a friction and which can't. So that design of journey is very, very crucial. Yeah, it's a very important point. Yeah. And I can see this very clearly, using technology now motivating the employees to have more tools, more power for selling, for augmented reality, for virtual reality. My last point here, maybe we should share about your experience building the team, training the team. Now we can see a lot of challenge now for retaining the team. Retention now, especially in Dubai, what we can see, retention here is very, very tough nowadays. And what you are doing for retention, how you can ensure that your employees, your team, stay in the team? Okay, so after, now when we are coming back to normal, see this, this issue has become a lot. I, as my own you know, team, I'm facing these challenges. But you know, there is a way of looking at it. When change is inevitable, people move. Today yeah. they move and tomorrow I can move. I'm also an employee, you know? It's at the end of the day, what matters is, are we getting, if we are leaving an organization, why are we leaving? Predominantly two reasons. To nail down the entire story. It's financial, and the other one is your career aspirations. For for this priority of one and two can change for an individual. For me, my career aspiration is more important. I can step back on financial slightly a bit, not too much. Now the market has become so diversified. Even people are moving to back home. The reason is the reward system is trying to be benchmarked across the geographies, irrespective of whether it is an international location or a native country location. So how am I rotating, uh, how am I retaining people is by giving them opportunity to rotate within the teams. You know, you should try finding opportunities where boredom is not created. People should motivate, feel motivated to come to work. I will not talk about my team, let me talk about myself. You know, what demotivates me from coming to work is today when I go, do I know what I'm delivering today? Yeah? I, am I just attending a set of meetings and coming <coughs> out with no action items? Is my decision having a concrete impact on either the customer or the bank itself? So when you do not have that motivating go-to factor, you know, people eventually move. Doesn't matter how much training you are giving, doesn't matter you're putting them in RPA or an AI on happening technologies. That motivation and vision towards where they are moving, showing them that picture is very, very important. So giving them clarity. Second one is allowing them to work across the departments, across within the team, so that they can keep learning and keep moving. And of course the third one, but very important, benchmark a good reward uh, system and appreciate them at every opportunity. Yeah, These three things. Yeah. So <clears throat> I have to just add my, my perspective, right? With the remote working, the, the resource or the war on the talent is across the world. It is no longer geographically limited and uh, it has opened up a market where we, everybody is competing with everyone, right? So yeah. it becomes a big challenge and at least in our organization, we are f finding that, uh, you know, the, the big uh, uh, attrition rate, especially in the technology space, because uh, uh, the, with the demand that has died in 2020, it has come back with vengeance at least 10 times. And I'm sure with every other organization, you're facing the same, where the business demand is rising and, and difficult to uh, you know, attract the talent. And so what we are doing is basically three things. Uh, one is uh, recognition, right? So people feel connected, engaged, when they are recognized and uh, you know rewarded as you know Sri has mentioned second thing is they need to understand the long the lack of vision usually what happens is in all the transformation programs people don't relate why we are doing and i think if the employees the team 
if they understand what is that they're doing and why they're doing and how is that aligning to the organization's goal, that is where the biggest hook to keep them, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep them loyal. And third, but you know, that, 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 that the last but not the least is more from the aspect of, you know, having that freedom of working and the trust factor, which I mentioned earlier, everybody should trust with each other. That is what would bind them together to work. And I think it's fair when industries were facing challenges, when you let go a lot of people, yeah? It's fine now that the market is changing. There are many opportunities that they want to move on for making their life better. I think we as the leaders need to understand, appreciate, and encourage. At the same time, don't jeopardize your business by having a backup plan. Train more people, bring fresh people into the team, and have always, see, people will leave, inevitable. I get another good opportunity, I might leave. So this is the nature of the business. So we as leaders should be always prepared with a plan B of having creating a talent pool which can be used across the bank or across any organization so that we give opportunity for people to grow. Exactly. At the end of the day, we are not married to the organization. Yeah. Even a marriage can be What, you mentioned, what you mentioned is very yeah. important, especially in the technology industry. It's very volatile. Yeah. There is always opportunities everywhere. Everybody wants to automate, to do digital, everything. So she mentioned something very important, have a backup plan. So every position, every task, you have to have your matrix, who is the backup, everything. This will save you. Uh, because if you're not anticipating that, it will happen. So, and big, higher management will only blame these managers because they don't have these backup plans. One more thing, uh, sh happiness and he healthy environment for these people. Don't burn them. Yeah. They know they are being burned. If they are working every day till 8 and you are calling them in the weekends or everything, they will feel burned. They will smile in your face and that they will f find somewhere else next day. Uh, one See, but I just, <clears throat> oh, I'll add to that point. I'm not contradicting with you, but there are many people in my team who work restlessly with an enormous number of hours, but I don't ask them. You know, they do it because they are passionate about what they're doing. Yes, I'm surprised good. sometimes I wouldn't even know that somebody was awake late in the night. And I asked, guys, this is not a healthy way of working. <clears throat> you shouldn't be doing that. It makes me feel bad that I am not treating my team well. They say, Shri, no, there was a problem and I really wanted to solve it. So I was passionate about it. So it, it really, see, the passion drives everything. Mm. When people are passionate about doing what they do, they do not really care the amount of numbers they are working in. Are they working on a weekend or no? It's totally their call. But we always have to encourage them to strike a balance. So yeah, don't ignore important. the financial yeah. part. You mentioned the financial yeah, yeah. part. Benchmark his, what he is doing and what is the market value. Always benchmark it because now the, imp the information is available everywhere. They know their market value. Think about, for example, now e-commerce in the last period. It boomed, right, in the COVID yes. period. So all these salaries of these people were suddenly doubled. Okay, but they know about it. You cannot yeah. hide it. Yeah. So you have to go with the market trend, otherwise you will have volatility. See, this Keep is another main point that will end up creating a friction. Because you're yes. bringing in people inside with a different package. Towards, you're not rationalizing or changing <laughs> the packages, people internal. Major reason for friction. You know, okay, somebody came in new, four years experience, eight years experience mm -hmm. with the bank for so much long. Oh, this doesn't go well with me. So. People are not able to relate. So this is a primary reason for creating uh, exactly. friction. Now, this is where, as you rightly said, the HR needs to step in to ensure that this harmony is being managed. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it's interesting. I think it is a big focus now on employee experience. So thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions for the panel. Actually, thank you so much for having this topic because I have been in a couple of panels where I will, I'm always asked, how do you improve revenue using analytics? What do you do differently? But I think this is the first time ever I've spoken about employees and employee care in this industry. I, I, I'm, I'm thanks for the uh, members and who organized and actually chose this topic. Yeah, it's very yeah. important right yeah. now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. So finally, somebody heard us. <laughs> we are also employees. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.